Hello. Um, I've tried to record this video three times now. Uh, yesterday. Uh, I was trying to do it in kind of a gimmicky, entertainy fashion to try and try and debate people into well, you'll see. Uh, I don't really want to, I don't need to get into it, but I wasn't happy with any of those videos. You may have even seen I uploaded a video and then quickly deleted it because I, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, so we're going to give it another try in a more earnest manner this time. Uh, so this video is about Web Zero futurism, sort of, uh, because I felt it was inappropriate to really describe what that is or really go into it on YouTube, right? Given that the principles of, of Web Zero Futurism are about sort of personal websites, small net type stuff. Uh, that's what Web Zero kind of is. Um, just for, but, but also this kind of caused problems with the previous video because it was just kind of felt like a redirect link to my website. It was in the description where you can listen to the blog cast where I actually talk about Web Zero. Um, but, uh, so, so the, the video kind of felt like a, like a redirect, like it wasn't really, didn't have any substance to it, so I've, I've been trying to think of, like, how do I not step on my own toes here, so that I'm not just going over stuff that I've already gone over in the blog cast, um, but still make an entertaining video. So, I suppose if you want to learn more about what Web Zero is, and what I mean when I say Web Zero Futurism, you can, you can listen to the blog cast in the description, um, and I suppose I'll just try and expand on what I talked about there. I don't remember 100% everything that I said, so I may, may go over some stuff that I've already talked about, but uh, you know how it is. You know how it is. L let's just talk about like one thing really quickly, which is I, uh, I have a, a personal website, if you don't know, it's nothankyou.neocities.org, again, description. Uh, it's hosted on NeoCities because they'll let you do it for free. Um, maybe one day I'll host it myself, or, but uh, for now, don't see a reason to. Um, I mean, there is. I actually do have a reason now because NeoCities won't let you host audio without paying them. So I had to ask a, ask a buddy to let me host the podcast on their uh, VPS. But it's also on uh, IPFS, which is also in the spirit of Web Zero, if not more so because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, which is which is brilliant. Um, so the other thing I've done with my website, as well as updating uh, or adding that new blog cast, is uh, I added one more person to the Denpa web ring. Uh, if you don't know about the Denpa web ring, this is my, my praxis, right? This is a, a bunch of Denpas with their small websites. Um, you can see the criteria um, for the Denpa web ring. On, on my website to, to submit a website. Your website has to contain at least one unique thought, one, one, one unique, it needs to have an interesting thought in it, right? Not just, you know, it has to have, you know, <laughs> you have to have an original thought and post it on that website. And it also has to load on my X60S in the, the Dillo web browser. This is a Dillo web browser, uh, which is a very minimal, old school web browser that doesn't support JavaScript and frames and all of this bloat. Uh, so yeah, uh, although I suppose even though it's called a web ring, the funny thing about Web Zero is sometimes Web Zero isn't web at all. Um, you know, I would count uh, Gemini, Gopher, Finger, IPFS, CJDNS, CJDNS, um, Hypercore to some extent, uh, you know, these sorts of things, I think, are all... They, they, they very much fit the idea of Web Zero, um, which is amusing, because, again, they're not really the web. But then again, Web 3 isn't really the web. Uh, and, yes, Web Zero is sort of a proposed alternative to Web 3. Uh, but I guess I want to talk about... Um, God, I've got so many... I, I love coming up with these meme meme terms, right? Like these little silly little little phrases, uh, and one of them that's been going around in my head for a while is bryophytic anarchism. Um, bryophytes are the class of plant that mosses uh, belong to. Uh, in fact, they're the only ones that are bryophytes. It's, a, it's a sci kind of the scientific term for mosses. And when I say bryophytic anarchism, uh, or bryophytic politics, 
I'm talking about the way that moss grows everywhere. You go outside, you see moss on the sidewalk, moss on the walls, you know, there's moss pretty much everywhere on Earth, from the Antarctic all the way up to the Arctic Circle, right? Like, there's moss grows everywhere, and it grows very well in natural environments, but it also grows in built environments very well too. And even though it's taking advantage of these built environments, these human structures, even though it's on a wall that a person built, no one bothers it, no one cleans it off, people let it grow because it's not causing any trouble and it's kind of neat and so that's kind of the philosophy that I'm trying to approach it with I don't think you can you know take down big tech uh, with by really yeah I don't think you can as an individual or even as a small collective or anything like that you know like I don't I don't and if you were to do that I mean you can't do it by making websites you, you would have to do it through policy and regulation and direct action and that sort of thing. Um, not that that would even necessarily be desirable, I don't know, um, but uh, the, 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 the idea here is to just create uh, the, the moss growing on the walls of big tech, of the internet, right? To, to create an alternative that uh, is better for some people. That's, a, that's, I think, a really good way to go about things. Uh, is that if you want to discourage someone from doing something, generally, uh, the thing that actually works isn't like punishing them for doing it, it is providing a superior alternative. And that's what I'm trying to do, uh, that's what we're all trying to do, hopefully, uh, over these, these you know, big tech platforms um, that are basically people farms. Uh, I don't like being farmed, and so I'm going to try and avoid them, but here I am on YouTube.com nonetheless, because they'll let me host infinite videos, so, you know. So, so the idea here is, um, yeah, to sort of, to provide a, an alternative to uh, the big web. You know, there's another term that's used uh, by, by a lot of people called uh, the small internet, which is more of a broad term. Um, I'm a little skeptical about this uh, for a number of reasons. I, I don't, even though I think it's kind of a cool term, I don't actually think it's that accurate, especially for what I want to do. You know, maybe this is where I differ from a lot of the people who are really into this is uh, that I uh, am not sort of a degrowth kind of person. I'm not kind of a, uh, I, I don't want to take any steps backwards. This is why I call it futurism, right? That's like the, the operative word here, is I'm not trying to go back to a 90s internet. I'm not trying to um, degrow from from big tech. I'm trying to grow beyond big tech and grow beyond the current state of the internet and Web3. I know the idea of Web0 kind of sounds like it's going backwards, but it just sounds cool, okay? Don't read too much into it. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, so the idea being that I see, uh, the so-called small internet as actually being much bigger than the big internet. The big internet is like five websites, right? The small internet is hundreds and thousands of websites, okay? If that's not bigger, I don't know what is. It's interconnection in a way that just doesn't exist, it, interoperability in a way that just doesn't exist on these big tech platforms. Um, and it's providing a way to opt out, and I think that's important. Um, well, I, I think it's useful at the very least. Um, and I think it's useful from a selfish perspective, because I want to opt out, and I want to encourage people to give me... Right, I want to opt out, I don't want to be stuck in the, the big tech ecosystem. However, I'm also a hikikomori neat guy who spends a lot of time online, and uh, there's since everyone conglomerates on these platforms, um, it's it's hard to find enough material to get through a day of being a neat and being on the computer all day uh, without being on YouTube, being on Twitter, you know, whatever. Although I, I don't really use Twitter anymore, but being on YouTube at the very least. Uh, and so the idea is if I can encourage people to make better stuff on the internet uh, away from these, these big centralized platforms, I can use it myself and get entertainment out of it and not give money and my time and my information and privacy and rights over to Google or whoever 
in the meantime. And that's a win-win for everyone, I think. Okay, so I think, I think one thing that is important, to me at least, is uh, a reversal of, I guess, sort of trust or emphasis. Uh, the modern web really likes servers and doesn't like clients. It prioritizes uh, servers as being trustworthy and clients as being untrustworthy. Um, and this is why I don't believe in web design, okay? Because I have, I think that the opposite philosophy leads to a better experience. I am running the website, I'm rendering the website on my own machine, thereby my machine, which I own, you know, should display it how I want it to display, or, uh, you know, do whatever I want it to do with that information, since at the end of the day, the inf I'm just, you know, the, the, the server is just a useful tool for me. This is the thing that matters, right? This is the thing that I own, um, and I should have total control over it. And so I think, um, you know, web design is often kind of an authoritarian attempt to standardize how everyone views your website according to uh, the principles of some web designer somewhere in Silicon Valley who supposedly knows what's best. Um, even if that's what's, even if they're right, even if they went to, to school and studied and, and they know all the principles of psychology and, and um, design that go into good UX, uh, good like website UX, um, I don't care because that's maybe good for the general populace, but that doesn't have anything to do with it being good for me. And if I want it to be good for me, the only way to, for it to do that is for me to have control over it. And f individually, for everyone, consequently, to have control over their version of it. And that means deciding how a website renders locally and prioritizing the client over the server as the, the sort of uh, the center of, of the whole thing, or the, the non-center, I guess. Um, and then, one more thing I want to say is uh, Web3. Web3 seems to be kind of failing. Uh, I think we all saw this coming, sort of. Some of us didn't. Some of us were very scared about Web3 forcing you to use it or whatever. I don't know. I'm, I, 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 I was kind of on the fence in the whole thing. Um, but, uh, so Web3 also claims to be decentralized, right? The idea, and I go over this in the, the, the blog cast description, um, subscribe via RSS, um, or don't, you know? We've got enough platforms that are all about bigger number, better person, number go up, hee hee, right? You know, it's not like I can see how many people subscribe via RSS, but you might find it enjoyable to subscribe via RSS. Um, so do that if you want to. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, the, the idea behind Web0 is you take Web3, which is decentralization, blockchain, crypto, NFTs, metaverse, and you take away metaverse, blockchain, crypto, NFTs, and you're left with just decentralization, and that's what Web0 Web is all about. Um, uh, so why does blockchain stuff not really work? It's because it's not truly decentralized. It's, uh, you know, in the same... Uh, it, it doesn't. If you have the same database, because you know the blockchain is just an append-only database, right? So you 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 have the same database. This one monolithic database. It doesn't matter if it's shared over or there's there's. It's not even shared. It doesn't matter if it's copied over lots of different computers in different geographical locations. It is only one thing topographically. It is still just copies of the same monolithic thing, and those copies have to be exact. Uh, so really, it's still centralized. Um, you know, arguably, ju I mean, definitely just as centralized as something running on a, a centralized Twitter data farm or, or something like that, right? Like, or server farm, I mean, uh, yeah, like, uh, blockchain doesn't decentralize anything other than, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's still, it's still, like, a actually centralized. It's just kind of an illusion of decentralization, whereas local websites, Gemini, capsules or whatever they call them, you know, all of these things, these are actually decentralized. There is no single um, database with lots of copies. There is no single server that hosts everything or, you know, small oligarchical group of servers that runs everything. There are lots and lots and lots of different distributed servers. And 
that goes even more so for peer-to-peer -peer networks where there really aren't even servers, um, you know, like IPFS, like, etc. Uh, um, yeah, so that's why Web3 doesn't work. It's also bloated, you know, another thing, I go over this in the blogcast, or I'll just sort of briefly touch on it, is, um, but actually, I'll, maybe I'll approach it from a different direction, is, is sort of minimalism and simplicity um, are desirable goals, and these are desirable goals for uh, the reason that we are trying to build stuff that can be done on a sort of individual level, right? Like, you and I should be able to make a website, and you can. HTML is extremely simple, CSS is extremely simple, RSS is extremely simple, you know, you can put together a simple static website with zero knowledge beforehand in about five minutes, you know, it doesn't take any time at all to learn, it's extremely simple protocol, um, or uh, simple, um, what do they call it? Markdown, is it a markdown language? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's very simple to write in, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, and, uh, and that sort of simplicity where the entire system can be easily understood by one person with only a brief period of study is the big advantage over, um, you know, the big web. That is, like, one of the singular big, big things that is good about this whole thing is the fact that you can be sovereign over your own territory in terms of, like, understanding. You can have a full understanding of the system and you can modify it to your own desire rather than, uh, you know, having to, you know, you, you might remember, you know, the old, like, websites, you used to be able to write custom CSS for them even if they were running on corporate servers. Or at the very least, you know, YouTube used to let you upload a big channel image that would make your channel look unique and then slowly everything gets standardized and looks more and more the same. Um, this is boring and it sucks and I hate it, and instead we should let a thousand different um, people make a thousand different things in very simple standards, you know, the, the web is built on these simple standards that allow for this, there's not really any reason to want, like, you know, com technology so complicated like, like blockchain um, that they need layers of obfuscation on top of them just to make them usable to the end user. Or te even technologies complicated like, you know, bloated JavaScript web design where you need websites like Squarespace, WordPress, these sorts of things to manage them for you. You don't need any of that. You you just need HTML and CSS and like, if you want to get into JavaScript, I don't know anything about it. I've never felt the need for it. It seems completely fucking pointless to me. I don't understand why you would want, want to use... I don't know. I don't get it. But, um, you know, you can get into that if you want. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, it's not going to render on my browser anyway. <laughs> it's not going to. It's not going to work on my browser anyway. It doesn't have JavaScript, so good luck with that. Uh, you know, and then there's a, a. Maybe I didn't really talk about what Gemini and Gopher is. Uh, I suppose I could go over that briefly. So those are alternative protocols to HTTP, um, and those protocols are, are much simpler and more lightweight. Gopher is extremely simple, it's actually quite old, um, it's ridiculously simple, it's very minimal, it can't really do that much other than sort of serve static documents, that's that's about it. You can serve static documents and that's kind of about it, but that's kind of good, right? Sometimes if you just want to do that, then you should have a protocol that just does that very well, and it does that very well. Um, and then there is Gemini, which is a little bit heavier than Gophia, think heavier than Gopher, um, but lighter than the web, uh, and uh, it's uh, sort of a middle ground between the two. Uh, they're both cool. I recommend, you know, downloading a, a Gemini browser to browse Gemini space. Um, there's there's cool stuff on there. There's a lot of really lame stuff on there too, but, you know, 99% of it, what is it, 90% of everything is shit, so that's not unexpected. Uh, we just need more stuff. This is the thing, 90% of everything is shit, but we need more stuff so that that 10% gets, uh, you know, relatively stays the same, but um, objectively, <laughs> yeah, it gets bigger, you know? We just have more stuff, that 10% of stuff that is not shit gets bigger. Um, yeah, 
Uh, there's no algorithms, you know, you might have to actually do some work. We're not going to have TikTok algorithm just show you, oh, this is what the machine hive mind wants you to see. No, 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 you, you might have to actually use your brain a little bit. You might have to use your brain a little bit and, you know, add stuff to an RSS feed, which is, it's not complicated. Um, uh, so that's what Gopher and Gemini are, and then I suppose, I, I, you can look up what IPFS is and all of these other things, I don't need to explain this to you. Uh, so that's that's the thing, and go listen to the blogcast, and go check out the other people in the Denpa web ring, because they're all cool, their websites are all cool, um, and uh, yeah.